This story is called Miss Paul and the President, the Creative Campaign for Women's Right to Vote. The words were written by Dean Robbins and the pictures were made by Nancy Zhang. This recording is for nonprofit educational use only. Here are some words you will hear in the story. This story takes place in Washington, D.C. That is the capital of the United States of America, where the president lives and works, and where the lawmakers live and work. One of its biggest streets is called Pennsylvania Avenue. When people like something, they cheer, clap their hands, and look happy. When they jeer at something, they don't like it, and they might boo or give it a thumbs down. Getting into mischief means you're doing something that's wrong and you might get in a little bit of trouble. Little kids and puppies get into mischief a lot. The Constitution is the plan for how our country will work. It tells governments and people what they can do and not do. It was written over 200 years ago and has had some changes made since. A scroll is a long piece of paper or cloth with writing on it. It is usually rolled up at both ends or at one end. When you unfurl a scroll, that means to unroll it. At the time of this story, a lot of people traveled by train if they were going a long distance. The last car on the train was called the caboose, and people might stand on the back on that little platform and give speeches to people who gathered around. Alice Paul hurried up and down Pennsylvania Avenue in a purple hat. She wanted to make everything perfect for her parade, a parade no one in Washington, D.C. would ever forget. Alice double-checked the 26 floats and the 10 bands and the dozens of dancers. Alice took her place with 8,000 other women. They wore colorful sashes and carried brightly colored signs. Let women vote in the 1914 election. Alice led the women up Pennsylvania Avenue to the White House, where the president lived and worked. People lined the sidewalks to watch. Some of them cheered, but many of them jeered. No votes for women, they called. Alice expected that. Women couldn't vote in the United States, and most Americans didn't think they should. She hoped her parade would help to change their minds. A mile away, Woodrow Wilson rode a train into Washington, D.C. He was the new president of the United States, and his daughter Margaret came with him. She fixed his tie and hat and said, Thousands of people will be here to meet you. You should look your best. But the president stepped off the train and waved, and no one waved back. The station was almost empty. The whole city had gone to see Alice Paul's parade instead. Let's find out more about Alice Paul. She grew up on a farm. She liked to get into mischief right alongside the boys in her town. They snuck candy and chased chickens and threw mud balls. Every two years, Alice watched her father go off to vote. Her mother had to stay at home. Why should it be that way? Alice read about her country's laws. The Constitution promised that people could elect their own leaders, but it also said that only men could vote. Weren't women people too? Shouldn't they be able to vote as citizens of the United States? Alice found books on women's suffrage. She learned that suffrage meant the right to vote. Suffragists wanted to change the Constitution so women could help elect their own leaders, just as men did. They needed to convince the President and the Congress, but the leaders in Washington wouldn't listen. Oh, Alice had lots of ideas for making them listen. When she was old enough, she joined other suffragists who demanded the right to vote. 
She impressed these women with her big parade on Pennsylvania Avenue, and even more when she set up a meeting with President Woodrow Wilson himself. President Wilson wanted to see the woman who had caused all this fuss. He thought she might apologize to him for stealing the spotlight on his first day in Washington. Alice did not plan to apologize. She sat down in the president's office and looked him right in the eye. Mr. President, will you support the vote for women? she asked. The president did not expect so bold a question from this small woman in a purple hat. Miss Paul, the time is not right. I have many more important problems to worry about. Here you see President Wilson getting to work on his problems. Alice got to work, too. She opened an office in Washington, D.C. for a new group called the National Women's Party. Thousands of women joined Alice's group. They called her their dear little leader, and she wanted to show the president that women's rights were as important as anything else in the United States, and she would do it by making mischief, just as she had on the farm. Margaret Wilson looked out the White House window. Father, come look. Alice led a line of fancy cars up Pennsylvania Avenue. Women honked their horns and waved their yellow flags. The lawmakers in Congress came out of the Capitol building to find a long scroll unflurled on the marble steps. It said, Support the Vote for Women. A funny-looking train chugged all the way across America. Alice had named it the Suffrage Special. The train stopped in towns along the way, and families came out to see it. Women made speeches from the caboose. Send a letter to the president. Tell him to support women's right to vote. President Wilson got bags of letters from all around the country. They piled up to the ceiling in his office. But the president had other problems to worry about. He didn't take time to read the letters about women's suffrage. So Margaret read them instead. That winter, Margaret sat next to her father in the president's car. A strange sight greeted them at the White House gate. Women were walking back and forth carrying signs. President Wilson spotted Alice at the front of the group. She looked him right in the eye. The president glanced down at his newspaper. But Margaret waved at Alice through the window. Alice and her friends paced in front of the White House day after day in the freezing cold. People lined the sidewalks to see them. Some of them jeered. But many cheered and even brought them scarves and mittens to keep them warm. The police ordered Alice to leave the White House. Not until the president supports women's right to vote, she declared. The police put the women in handcuffs and took them off to jail, just as Alice hoped they would. The newspapers said, Alice Paul gets out of jail, says women plan to keep getting arrested until the president listens. President Wilson did not like the thought of Alice in jail. He knew she loved the United States. Why else would she go to all this trouble to vote in her country's elections? Maybe women's suffrage is more important than I thought, he said. Margaret looked her father right in the eye, just the way Alice Paul had. Yes to the vote for women, she said. The president would make a speech, an important speech. Alice and others from the National Woman's Party came to hear what the president would say. He adjusted his spectacles. Margaret straightened the president's tie. People all over the country will read about your speech, she said. You should look your best. The president faced the crowd and said, The time is right. I will ask Congress to pass a law giving all women the vote. The women waved yellow scarves and threw yellow flowers. Three cheers for President Wilson, they shouted and three cheers for Alice Paul. Two years later, Alice skipped down Pennsylvania Avenue to vote in the 1920 election. She filled out her ballot and raised her arm in victory. <laughs>